Hey y'all, welcome back for another flip video. Today we're going to be looking at the American and the French revolutions. The Enlightenment ideas had kind of led to revolution, the desire for independence and new governments in both the United States and France. The essential questions that we'll be answering in this video are, what Enlightenment ideas were used to inspire revolution? And then how did the revolutionary period affect society socially, politically, and economically? Golden Hawk historians will analyze the extent to which revolutions were inspired by the Enlightenment and analyze the cause of the French Revolution and the impact on society, socially, politically, and economically. While you're watching, make sure that you're taking notes in either Cornell or outline format as we've talked about in class. It's okay if you need to pause or rewind the video to make sure that you're taking good notes and all of the information is there. The Enlightenment ideas had inspired Great Britain's colonists to seek independence and start a new nation founded on the ideals of the Enlightenment, the most important of which was that all men were created equal. The American colonies overall experienced a large amount of independence um, sent from Great Britain. They had their own governments, they made their own laws, and the colonists began to identify themselves more closely with their colony rather than as Britain's people. Following the French and Indian War, Prime Minister Greenville had kept about 10,000 British troops in the colonies after the war and demanded that the colonies help pay for the troops' presence through taxes. One of those taxes was the Stamp Act. It was a tax that was on all legal documents, newspapers, almanacs, sermons, playing cards, anything that was printed, it was there. The merchants in New England felt that the Stamp Act was going to hurt businesses, and others like Samuel Adams also argued that the colonists couldn't be taxed without representation. There were no colonial representatives in Parliament, and they didn't have a vote. The colonies first met at the First Continental Congress and agreed to issue a Declaration of Rights to protest the actions of the British. It essentially read like the 95 Theses. It was, this is why we don't like this. This is why we don't like this. And they accepted the right of Britain to regulate trade, but they did not accept the fact that they could tax um, the colonists. Those who were supported by the king were called loyalists, and those who wanted independence were called patriots. During the war, Enlightenment thinker Thomas Paine um, released a pamphlet called Common Sense in which he argued that the colonists deserved independence because they had an identity that was separate from the British. When the Second Continental Congress met, the committee formed to write a document to declare the colonies independent because they hadn't seen any action from the king. The Declaration of Independence included ideas from John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau that included the idea that all men were created equal and men have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In September of 1783, the Americans, aided by the French, were able to force the British to formally recognize the Declaration of Independence by signing the Treaty of Paris. The treaty set up the new boundaries of the New World, which is actually larger than the original 13 colonies. With the revolution over, Americans now were tasked with creating a new government. The French revolutionaries were inspired by the American Revolution and began to oppose the French monarchy, hoping for a more equal government in which all men were actually equal. The Americans signed the Constitution that created the federal system, or a system where certain powers are held by the federal government and some by the state. It essentially was a representative democracy. The Constitution held many Enlightenment ideas, including the idea of checks and balances by dividing the government into three branches, the judicial, the legislative, and the executive branch, and that the government exists to serve the people. There was a protection of natural rights of man through the Bill of Rights, and then also all men were created equal. The French were inspired by the American Revolution, and so they held their own revolution. The social and political structure that had been in France was known as the Old Order, or the Ancien Régime, that created inequalities in French society. The, these three estates, with the king at the top, were the first estate, the second estate, and the third estate. The first estate, right under the king, was mainly clergy. They owned about 10% of the land, and they paid no taxes, pretty much. The second estate was mainly nobles that were dependent upon the king for jobs, and they also didn't pay any taxes. The third estate was about 98% of the French population overall. It was the bourgeoisie, which was the middle class, and the peasants. The third estate had resented many of the privileges enjoyed by the first and second estates, mainly being the fact that they um, paid no taxes. The bourgeoisie overall were pretty wealthy, but they didn't enjoy the best jobs that were reserved for the nobles. The peasants, and the third estate as well, paid too many taxes and had very low wages to keep up with those taxes. The third estate members were inspired by the ideas of the Enlightenment, and also the American Revolution, and also the constitutional monarchy that had taken place in Great Britain during the um, British Civil War. The spending of King Louis XIV during the French 
an Indian War, and the support of the American Revolution, and the king's lifestyle, left France in a lot of debt, and the first and second estate were forced to start paying these taxes as well, and that led them to be very upset with them as well. Okay, and there was a lot of bad harvest and cold weather, and so a lot of the peasants were really cold, and they began riding over bread. The first and second estate called the king to summon the estates general, or the group of re representatives from each estate that would advise the king. Louis requested each state prepare cahiers, or notebooks, that listed their grievances, such as fair taxes, freedom of the press, regular meetings, denouncing regulations on leather making, which made shoes too expensive, and the right to kill animals that were destroying their crops. So I'll list a few. The second estate wanted to bring the monarch under the control of the estate's general. They no longer wanted to be controlled by the king. The third estate, though, wanted to change the voting process overall, make it more of a representative democracy rather than the first and second estate or the clergy and the nobles ruling over all of French society. The third estate claimed that they represented the people of France since they represented 98% of people and they called themselves the National Assembly. The National Assembly in the third estate got locked out of the first estate's general meeting and instead they met across the street at an indoor tennis court and took the tennis court oath in which they vowed that they would not separate and would continue meeting until they had established a constitution for France. Louis XIV ordered troops to Paris and Versailles in order to ca in case the monarchy needed to be preserved by force. He was worried at this point, with the um, National Assembly forming, that they would force the king out of power. The third estate, though, was worried that the troops were going to be used to keep them from meeting. And so the people of Paris sought to arm themselves against the king because they were worried about his power. So they went to the Bastille, which was an ancient prison that was traditionally held prisoners who spoke out against the monarchy. But they were looking for weapons. The commander of the Bastille refused to open the doors before firing on the crowd. And then the Parisians were able to broke into the Bastille, killing the commander and some guards and releasing the prisoners, but they didn't find any weapons there. The storming of the Bastille became a symbol for the French Revolution because it's seen as a blow to tyranny and the king's power since many of the people who were held there spoke out against the king. They still celebrate it on July 14th, which is known as Bastille Day. The French Revolution is broken into four main pieces. The National Assembly, the Constitutional Monarchy, the National Convention, and then the Directory, which kind of represent the different um, governmental phases that they went through. The, following the French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte was going to take power in France and would lead for many years. After the fall of the Bastille, many people were shocked by what they had done, and they feared that the king would punish the peasants in order to end the revolution. This great fear attacked villages, and they thought that the king was going to attack them and seize their crops, uh, and they were already hungry, so this was really scary to them. By 1789, the National Assembly, also remember that the National Assembly is the third estate, had eliminated all the feudal dues and services that the peasants owed the landowners, as well as the first estate's legal privileges. And they adopted a, a document called the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. It was essentially a bill of rights that talked about what the rights that men have. They argued that men had the right to liberty, equality, and fraternity, or brotherhood, a community. They argued that all men were created equal and are equal before the law. Both of these ideas kind of represented the Enlightenment ideas that we've talked about previously. In October, thousands of women marched from Paris to Versailles, protesting the, the price of bread because they were super hungry. Most of the protests were aimed at Queen Marie Antoinette for her frivolous lifestyle at the expense of the peasants. They demanded that the king and his family move back to Paris, which they eventually did, because they were worried that they, had, they were too far removed from the people when they were at Versailles. The assembly overall disbanded the clergy and started selling off the church lands to pay France's debt. In 1791, the National Assembly finished its constitution. The constitution set up a legislative assembly that had the power to make laws, collect taxes, and decide issues of war and peace. And it also set up that lawmakers would be elected by tax-paying male citizens. It kept the monarchy, but severely restricted its power. This kind of led to a constitutional monarchy. To the reformers, the Constitution kind of reflected the goals of the Enlightenment and led to the end of church interference and gave power back to the people. Following the completion of the Constitution, the king and queen attempted to flee to Paris, but they were brought back to Paris. Sorry, they were attempted to flee from Paris, but they were brought back to Paris. Other European rulers had warned, had warned against harming the king and queen. They were worried about their power in relation to the French king and queen. They thought that if France fell to a constitutional monarchy, then they might be um, asked to give up their power as well. Austria and Prussia actually sent troops so the National Assembly declared war against them, but the French troops were quickly defeated.
The National Assembly voted itself out of existence, seeing that its power was going to be limited, and called for a new legislature called the National Convention. The National Convention overall was broken into different factions. The sans culottes pushed for radical action and advocated for the formation of a republic, meaning that the people voted for representatives. The Mountains, or the Mountainyard, what belonged to the radical group, the Jacobins, represented the interests of the lower middle class and the poor. The Girondins were moderates, and they supported a constitutional monarchy, and then the Plain was made up of mainly swing voters that generally supported the Girondins, but would later switch to the Mountains. The King was placed on trial by the National Convention and sentenced to death by the guillotine. The National Convention also set up the Committee of Public Safety to manage the country's military defense against the foreign forces on France's borders. The committee had drafted all the able-bodied, unmarried men between 18 to 45 for military service. This upset a lot of people. They didn't want their sons going off to war. The Committee of Public Safety was led by Maximilien Rosacier. Remember him. He'll come back later. The convention also set up a court system to eliminate people who threatened the revolution. This came known as the Reign of Terror because of the series of accusations, the trials, the executions that were carried out and ended up killing about 17,000 people. Revolutionary leaders had kind of feared that they had lost control of the revolution, and they had started this revolution just so that they could have a new government, and now they were being threatened by another revolution. Robespierre declared that terror was the only way really to defend the governments against the enemies of the republic. We made them fearful of us and they wouldn't try to take, get rid of us. The revolutionary courts conducted trials and about 17,000 people were killed. Anyone who was accused or associated of the old or, order or the three estates was sentenced to death. Many of the people executed were the same peasants and laborers who had started the revolution. Mainly the people who were killed were anybody who was going to be in support of a monarchy staying. Even Robespierre eventually and his followers would be sentenced to death as well and they had been the ones that started the reign of terror. The reign of terror finally end, ended when the National Convention wrote another constitution that restricted voting rights of the first constitution. Now, only men who owned property could vote or win the election. The new constitution set up the directory or a government that was headed by five men called directors. The directors would be able to pass financial reforms that help farmers, but overall they're pretty corrupt because they only looked out for their own interests and they argued against one another. This kind of led the way for um, Napoleon to come into power. Now that you've finished, make sure that you read back over your notes and make sure that you have all the necessary vocabulary written down. It appears bolded and underlined terms. Thanks for joining me for this video, and I'll see you in class.